So today I'm going to be going through how I make compost tea, but unfortunately it's not quite that simple. There are some different types of compost teas we can make, and there are a lot of strong opinions out there about which compost teas might work better than others. So let's talk about this. Basically when it comes to compost tea, there are two different types we can make. There's anaerobic and then there's aerobic. Anaerobic is without oxygen, so that's basically stagnant water. And so different types of microorganisms can survive or thrive in those types of uh, environments. Uh, you know, these organisms don't need a lot of oxygen. Now with the aerobic uh, compost tea, that would be with water, right? So people will use a, like a bubbler pump or some type of means of aerating that water consistently and regularly to keep that oxygen supply available to the microbes, which will be constantly feeding and using uh, that oxygen. And so the end product of an anaerobic compost tea versus an aerobic compost tea will be different. The aerobic compost tea is of course the compost tea that's getting a bunch of craze these days. So with the aerobic compost teas, you might not have to worry about pathogens quite so much, but you also have to buy things to really make that work. And you have to have some sort of electricity source probably to run the pump. Now, when we look at the anaerobic compost teas, there are some different types of nutrients or nutrients in different forms that might also be useful to the plants, right? When you look at different minerals like iron or manganese, uh, and there are some others out there too, that can oxidize very easily, right? So oxidation can happen in an aerobic environment because that environment is gonna have oxygen. What happens when iron oxidizes, we get rust. And it just so happens to be that rust is not very useful to plants. They can take it in, they can absorb it uh, to some degree, but they can't really use it. Now in an anaerobic environment, uh, iron is going to be reduced. The environment is also probably going to be at a lower pH, which can help to preserve the reduced form of that iron and prevent it from oxidizing, right? These reduced forms of iron might be chelated to organic acids and such that can be more bioavailable and, bio and, bi and biologically useful uh, to the plants. And iron, of course, and manganese to, to an extent are both important for photosynthesis in plants. Now, when we look at some of the cons or some of the drawbacks of anaerobic compost teas, for number one, we have the potential breeding ground for pathogens like E. coli and some of the others out there as well. Secondly, we also have the potential production for alcohols and other compounds that might not necessarily always be very good for plants. And then third, of course, is mosquitoes. Uh, mosquitoes love to breed in anaerobic conditions, in, in standing or stagnant water, and they can do so very quickly, right? That process sometimes can only take 48 hours for you to get a, a new batch of adult mosquitoes. Now, when we look at the soil, it's very diverse. We have a vast range of different macroclimates and microclimates. Certain soils have different degrees of sand, silt, and clay ratios, which can influence how much air gets into the soil. But also in a lot of healthy soils, we have aggregates, soil aggregates, which are like clumps of soil that create a, an anaerobic environment within that clump, which can harbor beneficial or, you know, facultative anaerobes that can make uh, some of these nutrients in a more reduced form and more plant available. If you pull up some type of a weed in a garden and you see those like soil aggregates, those little clumps uh, adhered to the root structure of those plants, that's what that is. But in between those aggregates are air pockets. So you have anaerobic environments and aerobic uh, environments in even just one square inch of soil. So the soil has a very rich diversity and, and in that diversity is a very uh, strongly maintained balance. If you add a foreign species of microbe, chances are that microbe will not last very long in the soil because number one, the environmental conditions might not be conducive to uh, the life of that microbe, the, the requirements for it. And secondly, also the surrounding communities of microbiology, the fungi, the bacteria, 
and whatnot may quickly outcompete or even consume that microbe. Right, so if you're adding a um, a compost tea, and some of these potential pathogens uh, might not last very long in the so soil profile. So it might not necessarily be a long-term concern. You just have to allow the ecology to kind of balance itself out. But if you're especially applying a an anaerobic compost tea to a crop, always make sure that you're not doing it right before a harvest. Give it a good buffer. Uh, I like to do at least a few weeks uh, just in case anything splashes up onto the plants. That way, you know, any rain can help wash that off or the sunlight can uh, kill off with the UV rays can kill off any of those potential issues um, or any of the microbes on the phylospheres of, you know, the plants or whatever can kind of get back into balance, right? Because like different things like E. coli can uh, adhere to, to vegetables and things and, and we hear a lot about that um, you know, in the news with the infamous romaine lettuce and whatnot. So in a balanced and stable soil environment, E. coli generally isn't a problem. Now when we look at any potential production of alcohols or other compounds like that in an anaerobic compost tea, right, if we're only f letting that compost tea sit for two or three days, chances are the alcohol production is not going to be that high. Even if that is a concern, we can dilute it with more water and apply that to the plants then. There's also some intriguing research out there that alcohol might actually be beneficial in encouraging drought resistance in some of these plants, potentially, uh, but definitely more research could be done. And that might be a cool thing to look into. But also keep in mind that with some of these compounds, the dose is what makes the poison. It's not that these compounds are, in, are inherently bad in and of themselves, it's just that sometimes the balance might be off. You might be offsetting some of these things uh, that could end up making the plants unhealthy. Now, in regards to the mosquitoes, uh, mosquitoes can go through a life cycle pretty quickly. But one thing we can do to limit that is the any of the raw materials that you're adding into these uh, compost buckets to make that tea, you can mash them up. You can to really break up that cell structure so that those plants can break down and make and leach those nutrients into the water a lot more quickly. Right, so that compost tea is re ready to go by the end of one or two days and then you can apply that to the crop. Now, um, there may be different types of uh, plants or, um, or certain types of spices or something like that you might be able to add to the water that may be somewhat of a mosquito repellent um, but also just keep in mind that the quantity or the type of material you use to uh, to repel any of those mosquitoes uh, is also what you're going to applying to be applying to your crops right that you would probably be eating so just keep that in mind uh, but of course if you ever see larva or anything like that beginning to breed in any of your buckets uh, make sure to apply that compost tea immediately so that that bucket can be dumped uh, and you can uh, start a new batch or just give it a break because we do not want to be breeding more mosquitoes usually although they do have a role in the environment and they're a food source to uh, different amphibians and such like that. So keep that in mind as well. Now also when it comes to making an anaerobic compost tea, what you can also do is you can, um, you can stir it once in, a, once in a while with a stick and that will introduce a little bit more oxygen into the mixture, which may help to in encourage the growth and balance of some of these facultative anaerobes, which many of which can be beneficial to a wide variety of crops that we may be growing. So basically what we have here is a five gallon bucket. Uh, it's empty right now mostly. We got some green, so there we go. Um, now, to make this compost tea, how, or at least how I've been making it recently, is I'll put in like a good handful of grass clippings. It's a little bit more than a handful. I'll just throw that right in there. Uh, and then you can also take like a scoop of compost and I'll put that in there as well. 
and then I'll just fill it the rest of the way up with water. Um, I'm using water from the uh, the rain barrels uh, as it is legal where I use it, and then I'll let that sit. All right, here's a scoop of compost. It is getting dark, but I got so much time. And then, of course, I'll just fill that up with water at this point. Yeah, you can't really see. Just, and here we're just adding in the water. There's a lot of excitement these days about aerobic uh, decomposition, um, and and that and that's awesome. But this is anaerobic, and I have used this for a number of years, and and I have seen results with using this that are very good, better than adding just water. I know there's a lot of confusion out there about these anaerobic versus aerobic co compost teas and I'm probably just going to add to it. But also hopefully it'll give you some different things to think about, some things that aren't usually mentioned in regards to anaerobic compost teas. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching, uh, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care.